I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Welcome to the Grassroots Business Channel, where small business links with social media. I'm your host, Paul Willis, and my guest here is Oz Griebel, president of the Hartford Metro Alliance. Welcome to the program. Nice to be here, Paul. Um, we had a program on before talking a little bit about the Alliance, what it was really all about. But this one, maybe we can talk a little bit about some of the initiatives and some of the areas uh, that the Alliance is really involved in. Mm -hmm. um, one of which you had mentioned was the Urban Core. And maybe you can explain a little bit about that um, aspect within this within the Alliance. Well, it's a simple way to look at this is that um, you can't have a hole in a donut. And um, our, our view is for economic development purposes to be a strong region, uh, your city has to be a strong city. Okay. Uh, and so our approach to that has been over 13 years in working with our board, working with our investors, working with the, uh, the current administrations, both at City Hall and the state government is to do everything we can to be an advocate, an implementer of things that will make the city stronger. So there are a whole list of things that have gone over the past uh, 15 years. If you go back to the uh, Roland administration, Tom Ritter was Speaker of the House, Mike Peters was Mayor, the creation of the Capital City Economic Development Area, uh, CETA, uh, and the over $800 million of state tax money that came into this city starting in about 1998 uh, that was then augmented by probably a billion dollars of private investment, created everything from Rentschler Field over in East Hartford, which we believe is all part of the, of the core from an entertainment standpoint, okay. uh, to the convention center, the science center, the renovation of the G. Fox building, the uh, Hartford 21. Uh, it created about uh, 1,200 to 1,300 more housing units downtown that we didn't have before. So that's an example of a, people look, want to take a look and say, well, Hartford hasn't gone anywhere. If you go back from where we were in 1995-96 to where we are today, it's an extraordinary change, uh, particularly in the, uh, in the downtown. You augment that with what Trinity did around its campus and the mm -hmm. learning corridor. Uh, you augment that with some of the changes, many of the changes that Steve Adamowski uh, led when he was superintendent of schools and then Christina Kijimoto. The, the, fit, the footprint and the, and, the, uh, and the look of the city is much different. So it's an example of things that we have been, certainly we're not the political leaders, but certainly have been advocates for in creating what we think. If, you take, if we say that Hartford uh, is, it needs to be the dynamic urban core of the region, we would go so far as to say that as Hartford goes, so goes the region. I'd even go so far as to say that as Hartford goes, so goes the state of Connecticut in part because of the way people look at a capital city, how important it is for a capital city to be vibrant, dynamic, and appreciated by not only the people who live here, but by people who would be uh, visiting the area, uh, people who might consider relocating here. And then I'd go so far as to say that for the city of Hartford to be successful, downtown must be successful. Mm -hmm. So when you look at um, the, what I, all the things I just rattled off, and you uh, recognize what Governor Malloy has just done or with the legislature about 18 months ago, creating the Capital Region Development Authority, which not only includes uh, the, the, the old CETA uh, footprint, geographic mm -hmm. footprint, but put uh, Marshall, uh, Marshall Clerk, the, uh, the mayor of East Hartford, on that board. We've begun to see the, the, that linkage between Hartford and East Hartford is critical. Um, so that's led to $60 million that the legislature and the governor have given CERTA for additional housing units upwards, somewhere between 900 and another 1,100 units. Uh, when those all come online over the next 18 to 24 months, you'll now have 2,400 housing units downtown that weren't here before. That begins to create sort of critical mass uh, around uh, feet on the street that will attract the retailers uh, to come down. The fact that Panera Bread, for example, put a, uh, one of its stores uh, on uh, Main Street is a, mm -hmm. is, is a very significant, people say, well, it's just Panera Bread. Panera Bread's a nationally known brand. Right. Right. Uh, and the franchise owner of that, the one on Main Street, I think has something like 30 in the New England, in, uh, I think I forget its exact, I think it's uh, Connecticut up through the, Connecticut, Rhode Island, I think part of southeastern Massachusetts, I think is what, is, what he has for, uh, for, for his uh, franchise area. To put that kind of commitment in, 
I think is significant. The fact that the, they've opened on Saturdays from 8 to 2, it's, it's a big deal, uh, mm -hmm. and, and as silly as that sounds. But it's a very step, a significant step in the right direction. The move, um, the planned move of the West Hart the Yukon West Hartford campus to downtown over the Times building is significant. The fact that Spotlight Theater is now open, Capitol Grill is open down there. It's taken forever to get Front Street off the ground, but it is coming along. Uh, in addition to Capitol Grill, Infinity Hall will open, the Music uh, Hall will open down there in, uh, in the April-May time frame of next year. You build that, you look at what's happened with Riverfront Recapture, the Riverfront Park System mm -hmm. over the last 25 or 30 years. There's a critical set of, of assets uh, that, are, that are beginning to continue to grow. And as those housing units come online and more people live downtown, I think that will not only, not only will it have a positive impact on downtown, I think it begins to see, uh, it begins, will begin to feed economic activity into the, into the, uh, into the neighborhoods. Continue. The fact that we launched something, uh, a whole bunch of people worked on launching iQuilt. Uh, the idea of making the city more walkable, to the fact that the city got a $30 million Tiger Grant to redo the area around, um, around Bushnell, Bushnell Park, Park North uh, and Union Station. Connecticut Fast Track will be launched sometime late in 2014, which I think will have significant impact on uh, making the city easier to move around, not only move around, but make it more attractive for employers whose employees won't, some of their, whose employees won't necessarily have to drive into, uh, drive into work. So there's a tremendous amount of uh, investment, both uh, uh, investment of capital, uh, monetary capital, but also investment of a lot of, uh, a lot of creativity and imagination. Uh, in Vision Fest that was held two Saturdays ago, uh, bringing okay. people downtown on that Saturday. The fact that we brought bike races back, a gentleman by the name of Peter Hurd at Travelers brought the cycling races back that following Sunday. Mm -hmm. There's a tremendous amount of things going on that I think that, and there are issues. I would say that the glass is, I, I would say the glass is half full but it's not full. And there are issues around public safety, there are issues around public education, there's issues around our property tax situation that has to be addressed uh, in order to attract more private sector investment into the city. These things are all critical, but our asset base here is strong, and the commitment by a number of people, both elected officials and those in the private sector, are significant. What has been uh, the Alliance's role in working with the um, uh, area colleges? We, uh, there's an organization that's been in existence for about 25 to 30 years called the Hartford Consortium for Higher Education. Uh, it uh, is comprised, its, uh, its board is, uh, is, is, uh, is populated by the presidents of, uh, I think it's 11 institutions. Okay. So that includes Trinity and University of Hartford, Capital Community College, Manchester Community College, uh, Charter Oak State College, uh, uh, Goodwin. Central, Central, Goodwin, Central Connecticut. Uh, on there are, are all part of that, and they're actually that group. We support them. Uh, we support their accounting uh, and, and overhead needs. They're housed in our on our in our with with our team, okay. um, separate institution. But we do a lot with that with the presidents in trying to build a stronger link between the uh, institutions of higher education and economic development. Those uh, institutions of higher education are significant employers in their own right. And secondly, they are obviously a critical they are a critical supplier of the future future workforce. Uh, so that's an important element. One of the things you'd asked me earlier about initiatives, uh, going back about seven or eight years ago, uh, we thought it was important that we establish a business improvement district within the immediate downtown. That was launched uh, after about a year and a half of, of study and analysis and debate. Mike Zaleski heads that, and he and his team are also housed on our floor. So the idea of having greater coordination on two very important initiatives, clean and safe streets in downtown with a bid, and the role of higher education with the consortium are part of the uh, linkages that we have. Yes. Excellent. Uh, can you explain a little bit of um, what is HYPE, H-Y-P-E, and the uh, uh, Hartford-Springfield Economic Partnership? So the, Hart, the Hype Hartford Young Professionals and Entrepreneurs is an initiative we launched about 2005, 2006. We modeled it off of uh, a, a young professionals organization that we had seen in Milwaukee, like the, the general framework they had. We've been focused from the outset, uh, as I said earlier in the conversation, on the aging demographic uh, and the implications of that, uh, the economic implications of that uh, for, uh, for current employers and future employers. Uh, as, 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 as things like the internet um, and, 
uh, social media. So social media, to some degree, I mean, okay. everything is kind of linked. But the idea that you have to be close to your place of work is certainly okay. changed over the last twenty years. People are more mobile. Uh, companies are more mobile. They're less tied to their uh, as globalization has occurred. They've distributed a lot of their production facilities. Uh, people are more interested in having the flexibility to work from home. A whole bunch of things that we all are cognizant of um, has made it more uh, obvious that uh, companies, particularly those of some size, will tend to locate where the talent is. Okay. So the idea of uh, making sure that our companies that are here today and those that uh, might relocate here uh, and those that are here, they might expand here, are confident that there is a strong pipeline of, 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 of younger workers. Okay. Uh, younger being anywhere from late teens all the way up to people in their early 40s. That, that one of the things that we had to focus on is making sure that this area was seen by younger people. And I'll pick in this particular case, people in their 20s. Uh, people coming right out of school or out of the military service, or for that matter, going right into the workforce after high school that they would be aware of the fact that there are a lot of other younger people in the area and that they would have a forum, uh, an opportunity to do network, uh, to have opportunity for personal profession, personal development in certain areas, expanding their own skills, and have an opportunity to see where they can make a difference in the city and in the region through volunteer service on boards or other types of activities like that. And that's the essence of what Hype does. Hype provides networking activities. Uh, there, are, there are probably 80 to 100 events that it runs that that, that was led by uh, Julie Daly Meehan, uh, uh, who's been the was the original director and is still in that role. Uh, so, looking for the uh, creating kinds of events, we have the Olympic type style competition called the Hype Cup. Seven or eight events where teams get together. There's a traditional just social networking opportunities. There's opportunities we bring speakers in, uh, try to bring CEOs of some of our larger companies in to, at, for lunches to talk to groups of 20 or 25 uh, uh, hype members to see that. Opportunities to look at uh, one of their big events, two major fundraisers they do every year, one in conjunction with the Travelers Championship where they have a big event on the Thursday night of the, of the, uh, of, of the championship around uh, out at the uh, out at the uh, uh, out at TPC, uh, where there's a uh, major silent auction, an opportunity to network, and the monies are raised and mm. given to a given to a specific organization, and then they do a Toys for Tots uh, thing at, at uh, type event at, at Christmas time. They've also done events where they they've uh, raised uh, uh, materials for some of the public school public school here in Hartford. So getting that that younger person very much engaged socially professionally and uh, on a volunteer basis is, a, is what HYPE is all about. Okay. And just a little bit on the uh, Har Hartford Springfield Harvard Economic Springfield. Partnership. Yeah, and that's really been expanded now. So think of it more as a 91 corridor. When you look at the 91 mm -hmm. corridor from uh, New Haven all the way up through Springfield, look at the number of higher uh, institutions of higher education starting with Yale and the other New Haven-based schools down, uh, down in New Haven, all the way up through the Mount Holyoke's and Smith Colleges. Uh, north of Springfield, I believe there's something like um, 30 uh, different uh, two and four year schools in that area Absolutely. that are uh, graduating, if I remember correctly, something along the lines of 25,000 uh, students per year with either two, four, or graduate degrees. Uh, the uh, Obviously, Bradley Airport is probably the, the one magnet that draws everybody together because of its importance to the entire economic corridor and really getting uh, people on a cross border basis talk about where we can work together in a, in a more effective way. Okay. And maybe just a little bit about the, uh, the new project that is uh, currently underway between New Britain and Hartford. Uh, Connecticut Fast Track. Now, yeah. The Fast Track will mm -hmm. is, uh, construction is well underway. Uh, there are nine stops that are planned, uh, opportunities at those nine stops for what are referred to as transit-oriented development. If you look at what train and bus stations uh, have done, uh, well, well thought out ones, your ability to put mixed-use development around those stations is significant. Uh, and that's something that will be part of that. But the core is giving people coming, uh, traveling west into the city or east out to, uh, uh, east into the city from, uh, from the west and from Hartford west out to the New Britain area, an option uh, to uh, be out besides the, uh, besides the automobile or truck. We think that'll help not only with redu reducing of, of truck traffic, but the idea that people can have one seat ride service, get on at one of those nine stops, either in New Britain or along the way, and then be dropped off within an easy walking distance of their 
of their uh, of their place of employment will be not only important to them, but be important to the employer community saying, gee, this is another benefit we can offer to our employees or those that we're trying to recruit. I think it has significant impact, uh, significant potential for economic development uh, opportunities uh, uh, when it's launched late next year. Sounds good. And the, uh, I know we're coming back down with time. Can you tell us a little bit about um, Upstart Weekend? Well, Startup Weekend. Startup Weekend. Yeah, Startup Weekend is an initiative. It's the third year we've done it, and it's a uh, uh, the Reader's Digest version. It's a starts at six o'clock on Friday. It ends at six o'clock on Sunday, and over that fifty six hours, the, uh, the people on Friday night pitch ideas for businesses. The group that's in the room selects which ones they want to pursue. They build teams around those, and over the course of Saturday, <coughs> excuse me, and Sunday, build a business plan present those business plans around 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon to a panel of judges and they're selected. The whole goal, this is an initiative that's been running internationally out of Seattle for about a decade. It's really to, to create, uh, give people an opportunity uh, who've thought about starting a business uh, or want to explore the possibilities mm. of starting one, the opportunity to do that. It's a very exciting one and this year we're actually doing it in conjunction with a similar weekend in Ottawa. Uh, Canada that will be will, will, will be linked. Uh, our, our site will be over at St. Francis and one of their new uh, uh, conference spaces that has significant technological uh, infrastructure and so the teams in, uh, in in Hartford will be communicating with and probably have a team uh, that will have members in Ottawa and members in Hartford as we go through the process. So it's an interesting approach this year. Nice. And what day is it going to be? It's on? Uh, October uh, but probably October 18th through the 20th. It's the, whatever that Friday, I think the 19th through the 21st, I think, of October. Okay, that sounds good. And that's all on our website at MetroHartford.com. MetroHartford.com? Metro Correct. Is it? Very good. Well, we've come down to a uh, another end to a program, and I'd like to really just extend my um, appreciation sure, my for coming on, yep. on the program here. You've been uh, watching Grassroots Business Channel where small business links with social media. Our guest this week has been uh, Oz Griebel, president of the Metro Hartford Alliance. And until next time, see you then.